works for you begins right now with breaking news. It is stunning news that we were not expecting. The University of Oklahoma head football coach Bob Stoops is stepping down. We have been following this breaking news all afternoon and we are working for you with team coverage tonight. Reporter Katie Wisely is live in Norman where a news conference is set for the bottom of the hour. First sports director Big Al Jerkins has the reasons for Stoops' decision to retire. Al? Well, Brian, after saying the timing was right to step down, Bob Stoops has retired as the head coach at Oklahoma at age 56. 33-year-old Lincoln Riley will take his place. Stoops took the job left vacant by the firing of John Blake in 1999, leaving Florida as Steve Spurrier's defensive coordinator. Included in his 18 and a half year tenure at OU, Stoops won more games than any other Sooner coach, won 10 Big 12 championships, a national championship in his second year, beating a heavily favored Florida State in the Orange Bowl. He also had four total national championship games. Stoops claims this is not a health issue, just the right time to step down. Stoops gave absolutely no indication this was coming. In fact, he was in Tulsa just last week for the Sooner Caravan. Talking to Barry Switzer moments after the news broke out, Switzer told us he was as shocked as anyone. I'm shocked because three or four days ago I was in his office. I was touring the South End Zone complex and I was visiting with, uh, I had an ex-player force floor in town that took he and his wife through the facilities. And first time I'd seen it, Bob was there unpacking, going to his office. We went into his office, we visited, uh, we uh, took pictures and uh, did all those things you would do. And, and then I get this call this afternoon, so I'm as stunned as anyone. Meanwhile, Riley, the offensive coordinator for the last two years, takes the job as the youngest head coach in Division I football. Al Jerkins, two works for you. All right, thank you, Al. As you can imagine, OU students and alumni are heartbroken after news of Bob Stoops' retirement broke this afternoon. Yes, and two works for you reporter Katie Wisely is live in Norman tonight where students are at a loss for words. Katie. Brian and Cher, good evening. There's no wet, better way to put it than a loss for words. We just got to the campus about 30 minutes ago and spoke to a few students, and they tell me football season will not be the same without Bob Stoops. Now, Stoops coached the Sooners for 18 seasons and had quite a successful career with the most wins in Oklahoma history. In a statement today, Stoops said that the time is perfect to hand over the reins and the program is in tremendous shape. He says coaching life is like a relay race, and he's thankful for his turn but it's time to pass the baton. Stoops says he plans to stay in Norman with his family and help the athletic department in any way that he can. Now, that news conference will take place in just about 30 minutes at the stadium here at the campus behind me. We will be live streaming that conference for all of you to see on our website at kjrh.com as well as Facebook Live. Reporting live in Norman, Katie Wisely, two works for you. Thank you, Katie. And continuing our team coverage, reactions continue to roll in from around the state. Reporter Micah Hatfield is live with Tulsa's head football coach to get his take on this. Micah? Shara, we've been out on the streets since the news broke, and Coach Philip Montgomery, like so many others, is in complete shock. Similar to Coach Barry Switzer, he says when he first heard the news, he thought it was fake news. Montgomery says there's not a set perfect time to announce retirement, but says it is an odd time to announce OU football started camp this week. He says Oklahoma has had a list of outstanding coaches and Coach Stoops will obviously be on that list. He's done an outstanding job there and to be able to hold that type of tradition and and be that consistent throughout all those years is 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 a great representation of who he is and his program. So. Uh, an end of an era, a start of a new one, um, that's just part of it. Offensive coordinator Lincoln Riley will be stepping in as head coach. Montgomery says he knows Riley will do an outstanding job. Coming up at 6, hear reactions from one of Coach Stoops' former players who says he will forever be grateful for the impact he had on his life. Micah Hatfield, two works for you. And for those of you who have our Two Works For You app, we were the first to learn about this breaking news. If you do not have it yet, it is free. It is very easy to download. Just search Two Works For You in your app store. More breaking news this evening, this time from Washington, D.C. We are learning what former FBI Director James Comey will say in his testimony to Congress. 
We now know at least part of what Comey will tell the Senate Intelligence Committee on Thursday. The fired FBI director will take the stand in a highly anticipated hearing tomorrow morning detailing his interactions with President Donald Trump before his abrupt firing. NBC's Blaine Alexander is in Washington with details on Comey's opening statement posted online. Blaine. Well, Shara and Brian, the statement was released in advance at Comey's request less than 24 hours before he's set to testify. Today, a detailed first look at what fired FBI Director James Comey will say to Congress about his interactions with President Trump. In his opening statement, released today, Comey recounts nine different conversations with the president. He describes a January 27th dinner at the White House, which Comey felt was orchestrated to have him beg to keep his job. Comey writes, the president said, I need loyalty. I expect loyalty. I didn't move, speak, or change my facial expression in any way during the awkward silence that followed. Two months later, a phone call from the president who, quote, described the Russia investigation as a cloud that was impairing his ability to act on behalf of the country and asked what the FBI could do to lift the cloud. Comey confirms news reports that the president asked him to drop the investigation into Michael Flynn. Comey's statement released just after top intel chiefs were grilled on Capitol Hill about their own interactions with the president. Why are you not answering these questions? Is there an invocation by the president of the United States of executive privilege? Is there or not? Not that I'm aware of. Then why are you not answering because our questions? I feel questions? it is inappropriate, Senator. I, what you feel isn't relevant, Admiral. The heads of the NSA and National Intelligence said they never felt pressured to intervene in an ongoing investigation. I have never been directed to do anything I believe to be illegal, immoral, unethical, or inappropriate. But they would not answer whether or not they had been asked. Tomorrow, more pressing questions when Comey takes the stand. And almost lost in all of this, today, President Trump made his announcement for new FBI director, Christopher Wray. He made the announcement on Twitter this morning, calling him a man of impeccable credentials. In Washington, Blaine Alexander, two works for you. And by the way, you can read much more of Comey's opening statement and learn about the president's new pick for FBI director online at KJRH.com or our app. New tonight, a house of God spray painted with obscenities after vandals struck overnight. Yes, the pastor at Cornerstone Hispanic Church says the offensive language tainted their place of worship and now the church is left to clean up the mess. Two works for you. Anchor Corey Duke joins us live from the church with a warning for others. Corey. Brian Shara, this is the third time the church has been a victim to these vandals. The words and symbols that are written on the walls here are hurtful to the community and tonight the church just wants it to stop. It's a place where the lost can be found. They come with their families to praise God, you know, have a, a time, you know, to get close to God. The doors of this church open to everyone. We try to help the community, uh, the Latino community, and, and also we have a lot of uh, biracial couples that come here and worship God. But within the past two weeks, an unwelcomed visit stained these church walls. So it's very sad, you know, and that means that, that people need it needs God. Pastor Jose Alfonso greeted by vulgar language and a middle finger this morning as he arrived to work. He says if the disrespect was intended for him, the vandals missed their mark. People, you know, they don't do that to the church, they do that to God. And this isn't the first time. Our church band was vandalized twice and today, this morning, we, uh, we came this morning and then we saw this. Why this church is a clear target remains a mystery. Within the last 17 years, nothing like this has happened until now. The hands of those who built this church now work to wash away the hate. And although this crime is hurtful, the church isn't holding a grudge. I will say that the lesson is that the same way that Jesus Christ, you know, forgive us, then we have to forgive. Compassion now given to those who defaced a place of worship. However, a police report has been filed. Now the church just wants other churches to be aware of these vandals and they tell me that they're considering looking into security cameras. In East Tulsa, Corey Duke, two works for you. Thank you, Corey. Today's scary moments for some residents in Owasso to wake up to smoke inside their apartments. Two works for you. Reporter Jitzel Puente explains where the fire started at the Brookwood complex. 
Investigators believe the fire started behind the wall of this back building. Now you can see where firefighters had to break through to get to the flames. It was crazy. It just I I had never experienced anything like that before, so it was just I didn't know what to think. I just knew I needed to get the kids and just go outside. When Samantha Millette's apartment filled with heavy smoke at just after midnight, she knew she had to rush to safety. It was just chaotic. My heart was racing, trying to figure out what we were going to do. Millette's apartment and 10 other units had to be evacuated. Then there was smoke coming out the other doorway of the building from people coming out. Uh, when they come around here, there was a little bit of fire on the top balcony. The Owasso Fire Department says no one was hurt, but there is significant damage to the outside of the building and some water damage inside. Some residents like Millette say they were relocated for the night. Well, we got to stay in a vacant apartment that's right there. It's a three bedroom and it's actually a couple different residents in that apartment complex. While management wouldn't comment on the fire, they say they were happy no one was hurt. Meanwhile, the fire marshal says the cause is still undetermined, but their investigation revealed a cigarette could have sparked the flames. Some of the residents living here told me they had no power for several hours. Meanwhile, the Red Cross says it's ready to help in any way. Reporting in Owasso, Jitzel Puente, to Works for You. And just talking about the weather right now, you went out to run this morning. Right. You said it was actually pretty nice because it's been humid lately. Yeah, my daughter was like, Dad, it's kind of chilly out here this morning. I know, it felt, it felt really good. <laughs> Temperatures in the 50s this morning. Take a look at the sunrise. Yeah, this was what it looked like this morning. Beautiful start, few high thin serious clouds across northeast Oklahoma. Since that time, we've seen... Fair skies, a really nice afternoon here in northeast Oklahoma. Any clouds have been well out to the west of us on the Texas Panhandle. Otherwise, warm and dry conditions. Tulsa at 82 degrees, McAllister 84, Grand Lake in the lower 80s. And what we're tracking for you right now is warmer weather will soon return. That means it could be a little hot by the weekend with your plenty of sunshine for your weekend forecast. But also our next chance for storms. More on that with your seven-day forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Mike. Long lines of tourists were seen outside the Notre Dame Cathedral this morning following a violent stabbing on the Cathedral Plaza. No group has immediately claimed responsibility for the attack, but police searched a man's home outside Paris and found a declaration of allegiance to ISIS. The visitors outside the cathedral insisted the attack would have no impact on their travel plans. And the woman at the center of the Bill Cosby sexual assault trial arrives at the courthouse. It is day three of the trial and star witness Andrea Constan is expected to go through more cross examination. Yesterday she testified after she rejected Cosby's sexual advances. Cosby drugged her and sexually assaulted her at his home in 2004. This is what she says. Cosby has denied those allegations and said the interaction with Constan was consensual. If convicted, Cosby could get 10 years in prison. New at 5, Green Country Superstar Speller is being honored today. Ahead, what we learn, what's next for Edith Fuller. Also later, why there's such a big demand for dogs who failed their TSA training. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Sherry Kimiko. You're watching Two Works for You at 5. Welcome back. Great stuff here. Top honors for a little Tulsa girl. The six-year-old champion Speller now holds the key to the city. That's so great. Two works for you. Anchor Karen Larson was there as Edith Fuller and her family visited City Hall. Well, you know, we followed Edith all last week as she competed in the 90th Scripps National Spelling Bee in our nation's capital. And everywhere Edith went, people encouraged her. Well, now she's finding that same support here at home. Now, therefore, I, G.T. Bynum, mayor of the city of Tulsa, do hereby proclaim June 7th as Edith Fuller Day in the city of Tulsa. A big proclamation for this six-year-old, Edith Fuller, home after competing at the nation's capital, now earning the city's highest honor. But we want you to have the key to the city. So there you go. Congratulations and thank you for representing our community so well. We're so proud of you. S T Y Nick Dynasty. Correct. Proud of Edith for making history as the youngest speller ever to compete in the Scripps National Spelling Bee. She managed the spotlight better than children twice her age, spelling a word she had never seen or heard before. Tapas. T A P A S. Tapas. Correct. 
When I saw her use her clues, the Spanish origin and the plural noun, and put it all together and spell it right, I, I was just never so proud as I was at that moment. Annie Fuller says she and her husband feel privileged to live in Tulsa and proud as school spelling bee competitors themselves to see their daughter surpass them. I have many to thank today. Edith wrote her own thank you letter. Thank you to mommy and daddy for quizzing me my spelling words. Thank you to Channel 2 for sponsoring my trip to the set. <coughs> Thank you to all the people of the Tulsa area for supporting me and encouraging me. She also thanked Jesus and in the end made a promise to keep spelling. I didn't win the national spelling bee though, so I want to compete next year. Isn't she adorable and so smart? Well, the Fullers told me that they're very glad to be home and they now plan to slow down a bit and just enjoy their summer. Karen Larson, two works for you. Storm Shield weather, certified most accurate. I love showing views like this on this wonderful weather day. You can see mostly fair skies from downtown Independence, Kansas, at the airport, Jinx East. Uh, intermediate, so looking great all across the metro region. You can see with live radar, no rain to uh, talk about today. Any